it wouldn't be about, for example, regressive psychotherapy. No. And it wouldn't be about looking at how the past affects the present, so even though you might do, I don't know, some, some educative therapy in those, say, 12 sessions, which might look at how the past affects the present and different coping mechanisms, it'd be much more specifically focused on one or two particular aspects of change. Yeah. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to episode 67 of The Therapy Show with myself, Jackie Jones, and the wonderful Bob Cook. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at short-term versus long-term therapy. Yes, that's Is there such a thing as short-term therapy? <laughs> What a great pod! <laughs> what a great podcast, then, because you know I do all the assessments and still do at the institute, even though I've sort of semi-retired. I do all those assessments. I always say, if I had to do a percentage of say out of ten, I would say probably at least seven or eight. That's quite a high percentage, isn't it? Of them will ask the question, "How long do you think it will take?" Yeah, and I always say, you know. Well, how long is a piece of string? So it's a it's a good good podcast we're going to have about the advantages and disadvantages of short term psychotherapy, and I think I think we'll have a good discussion. Yeah, me too, me too. It's one of those things that well, I always contract right at the very beginning that they'll come for at least four weeks, that for at least a month, and then we'll reassess where we are after that first month. Mm. And the only time I've ever done short term was when I was training and they kind of come in for a designated period. So it's contracted that I will see them for X amount of weeks. But other than that, they've there's a few exceptions, but the majority have been long term. That's interesting, isn't it? I mean, in the NHS, in the United Kingdom anyway, uh, the preferred therapy, if you want to call it a therapy, and some people might not, is CBT. Yeah. Um, and if you can get uh, a CBT therapy in the NHS, and with all the cuts, it's not it's so easy. People go on lists. Um, I think the average time given would be 12 sessions. Yeah. Which is, course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which is of course short, short term. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the insurance companies will designate maybe six to eight sessions. Um, so it's very important for people listening to this to look at their insurances by the health insurances, by the way. So a lot of insurance companies will only pay for that, and that's short term again. So a lot of therapy which is designated to different health providers and NHS of course the biggest is short-term therapy yeah which is a completely different ball game completely different goal ball game to the idea of long-term therapy and then the other question is what you know what constitutes long-term psychotherapy as opposed to short-term psychotherapy uh, which is a really interesting question and according to I think the therapist you asked that question to will be determining the answer. So if you asked yeah. it to me, which because when I when I, when I say, well, I'm a long-term relational integrative psychotherapist, and the person says, What do you mean by long term? I will say at least uh, a minimum of 12 months. Yeah. But more likely um, a minimum of two years. Nearly always answered that way. And before I retired, if you looked at my practice of a probably about 15 to 20 clients, the average would probably be four to five years. Yeah. So I very much term myself as a long-term psychotherapist. And if we say in for this podcast, minimum one year. Yeah. Because... It's the psychotherapy bit for me. Mm. You know, if, if it's coaching, <clears throat> it's even counselling. 
then that's more likely to be short term in my eyes. Whereas when you're talking about psychotherapy, I always think of it as long term. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because um, especially in today's economic market. Yeah. Because what I haven't said, of course, is that it's weekly therapy. So yes. it's minimum one year, weekly. 52 sessions. Two sessions. Yeah. And most qualified therapists uh, are going to charge um, a maximum of £60 probably. Um, oh, sorry, a minimum of £60 probably if they're qualified and been around a bit. And some of them are like myself, and I kept the prices down because of my belief systems, you're going up a lot more in price. Yeah. So in today's economic world, unfortunately, it may take a lot of people out of the equation. Yeah. yeah. I I did have sliding scales, and I did try to accommodate economic um, situations. Still, it's it's it, it, it's important to bear in mind. However, for some people who have been so personally traumatized, um, it becomes priceless. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And it, it is, it, it's, it's how much you're willing to invest in yourself. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I'm just finishing off um, interviewing people for the four year training psychotherapy in, you know, the Institute. And we've been quite inundated this year if we want to retrain in that career. And so UKCP training. So in other words, we're an, the Institute's an accrediting training organization of the UKCP, we're audited by the UKCP, and they put down criteria that we have to follow, and which I agree with that what I'm going to talk about now. Um, and it's a four-year psychotherapy training program. And, and the UKCP say that there has to be a, at least 160 hours of personal psychotherapy. And that's 40 hours a year. Yeah. Take away Christmas, take away Easter winter once a week yeah so if you're going to retrain as a psychotherapist um the ukcp the major regulating body in this country for psychotherapy are saying that you have to do four years um you know which is once Personal therapy, therapy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah which of course is expensive itself but uh behind that you have to know yourself so you don't merge with your clients so it's imperative not only for yourself personally, I think, but professionally, if you're going to choose that career. Yeah. So they recognise, that's what I'm saying, the UKC. The importance. Recognise yeah. the importance of long-term psychotherapy. Yeah. And as I say, I, I try and make allowances for economic situations, but it will cut out economically a lot of people, unfortunately, because as I said, if there's been heavy trauma, then long-term psychotherapy is really a must and is priceless yeah which is probably you know when you're looking at the cost of training you know that potentially could be the reason why people choose counseling rather than psychotherapy well uh, now you're taking me down a real road here aren't you uh, because uh, i don't know if that's correct or not but People who go down the road of counselling, for whatever reasons, there's be a lot of different types of reasons. One of them is, of course, and I don't know if it is a reason why people choose counselling, but you don't, you aren't designated by the major regulating body in this country, which is the British Association of Counselling and Psychotherapy. They don't ask for any personal hours at all. Yeah. Now, most counselling courses of their, you know, worth their salt anyway will probably require them to have some, but usually it's often only over four years. They don't do four-year courses, probably three-year courses. Yeah. It's only usually 20 hours. Yeah. And, you know, I know what I think about that. I certainly don't think it's enough. No. And, and you know, when, when I know we're going down a different route now, this is long-term versus short-term, the, the topic of this. But when you look at the cost of training as a psychotherapist, you know, the difference in and I was counselling or coaching or psychotherapy mm. reflects 
the training that, that you've had to do over four years and the cost of that and the supervision and the ongoing, you know, continuous professional development that the majority of psychotherapists yeah. do throughout their career. Yes, yeah, so you're right, it's not really off the road because um, clients will come in and I say, um, say they've had, I don't know, uh, you know, a lot of trauma, deep trauma. And I believe for us to work healthily and really get to a place where a person can function the here and now in a healthy way, um, you need at least a year or two years psychotherapy once a week. Now, you know, first again, for most people of that type of specialism, we're talking about quite a lot of money monthly. Yeah. Uh, so we are in the area of people who perhaps, what, what are they left with? So they go, you know, perhaps they can go to the NHS or and then it's just really specialised in CBT. They might do what is called dialogical behavioural therapy, but that's a pretty long waiting list. So it's a whole um, area of discussion where economics plays a really, unfortunately, Jackie, plays a really big part to play. Yeah. So how would you go about doing short-term therapy then? Is it structured different to long-term? Yeah, very different. Yeah. Um, so there's a book by Keith Tudor. I mean, we're, you know, we're transactional analysts. I mean, I gone on to train in relational integrative psychotherapy because my, you know, my basic training is, in, training is in transactionalities. There's a book by Keith Tudor, uh, which I quite like, which came out about 10 years ago, which I think it's called Brief, I think it's called Brief Psychotherapy by Keith Tudor and T-U-D-O-R. And there's a lot of um, chapters in that book from well-known TA therapists actually talking about how they would do TA in a brief way. And actually I haven't read it for about four years, but what I do want to say about that is that uh, they all would state, I'd have to go back to read the book, but I'm, I'm sure they would, uh, that one of the really important prerequisites about brief psychotherapy is the contract. Yeah. And secondly, that it's very specific. Yeah, that that's what I was thinking then, that, it needs to be specific and have an end goal and a definite route to that, as opposed to being, you know, adaptable and free to move around and yeah, an open-ended contract, definitely. Yeah. So it wouldn't be about, for example, regressive psychotherapy. No. And it wouldn't be about looking at how the past affects the present, even though you might do, I don't know, some some educative therapy in those, say, 12 sessions, which might look at how the past affects the present and different coping mechanisms, it'd be much more specifically focused on one or two particular aspects of change. Yeah. In the here and now. Yeah. And solution focused rather than explorating, explorating, exploring. Yeah, yeah. very much so, very much so. So, you know, how to stop smoking, for example. Yeah. Yeah, or a much more specific, like you've just said, solution focused. Yeah, and specific nature. outcomes to it. Yeah, which are measurable. That's why the the NHS usually uses CBT because they say it's measurable. You answer a questionnaire when you first go, and you answer one when you're finished, and then they can measure whether it's working or not. Yeah, and you've got all these different diagnostic methods like core nine icd9 dsm4 whichever way you want to look at it where core nine or is it core 10 or even core 11 now where they 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 do what you've just said uh, and put the um answers to the questionnaires on the computer and they after every session you fill in a computer process and a, you know a whole so at the end of the 12 sessions or whatever it is you can match how you've gone along behaviorally the yeah. seeking outcomes so there's a whole structure around it uh so that's very very different animal to um long-term psychotherapy with the relational integrative psychotherapists for example or perhaps even from another discipline um which goes very much developmentally into a person's past and looks for where the you know the deficits are there and where the trauma is and looks at the healing from a a, a past developmental position rather than staying in the here and now and looking yeah. for behavioural outcomes. 
And that that word relational as well, you know, when you're in therapy long term, it is, you know, the relationship, the therapeutic relationship plays a big part in it, which I would imagine if it's short term and solution focused and structured, there's not really enough room to build that relationship. Yeah. And there's not a focus on it. No. Yeah. Yeah. And you won't. There will not be much of a focus on what in psychodynamic or long term, but, you know, processes, um, transference or counter transference. There won't be a focus on on, yeah. on that in this short term psychotherapy. Yeah, it's much more focus on, you know, change of, you know, behavioral focuses. Yeah. In the here and now. So if I took you to a short term CBT therapist, you would be doing mood diaries. Yeah. Or, you know, how things have changed week to week in terms of um, thought patterns or, or things which are very solution focused. Yeah. Unhelpful thinking styles is one that yeah. you look at, yeah. the different ways that we think about things. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying they're not useful. They're just, it's a very different structure. That's like yeah. the word used earlier on. A different structure uh, and a different focus in the two therapies. Yeah. And, you know, I, I sound like I'm very skewed towards the long term, but that's because that's what I, you know, I was trained in and that's what I do. But for some people, short term therapy is enough and it's what they want. You know, if they're leading busy lives and they can schedule it in once a week for eight to 12 weeks and that's it. And it is solution focused and it's moving in the right direction. That's that's brilliant. And money comes into it in a big time. Yeah. Big yeah um and you're right and and also change can happen i think yeah in 12 sex 12 um sessions yeah. if you never talk to anybody at all uh about some of your unhealthy patterns or um things which are causing you real difficulties in life in terms of mental health um talking to somebody for three months in itself yeah. could be extraordinarily helpful yeah because you know I, I i've had one client quite a few years ago that came for four weeks and totally transformed her life yeah snap like i said that that's the one that sticks out for me you know it wasn't the intention she didn't come for short term therapy oh. but after four weeks she had literally taken on board everything and got so much from it and completely turned things around and they've developed and developed, I suspect, different coping mechanisms. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also on the same uh, level, um, short-term therapy, and I'll put that in inverted commas here, can often be the bridge to long-term therapy. Yeah. So I, I, somebody came in for assessment, I think about four weeks ago, and she said, I said, have you had any therapy or counseling? She said, yes, 20 years ago. I said, wow. And she said, it was the most wonderful thing I ever did. And I said, how many sessions did you have? She had six sessions. But she said it changed her life because she never talked about these things, which had hurt her so much. And she never experienced a kind person before. Oh, wow. And that stuck in her mind and gave her the impetus to come back after yeah. all these years to take this further. Now, 20 years might seem a long time, and it certainly is at one level, but another level psychological time and real time isn't the same thing no no definitely yeah sometimes i think i'm still living 20 years ago when i realize it's 2022 it's like wow where did those 20 years ago so yeah i could i can imagine and it is if, if it's a good experience if somebody leaves after four or six weeks with a good experience it just stay with them oh absolutely uh I, that's what i've just told you there has happened many times Maybe not 20 years ago, uh, but they say, you know, five years ago, I managed to talk to somebody and they were very kind to me. And I've always remembered uh, yeah. that. And um, that's been the motivation to come back at this particular time when things are in this phase of my life are particularly difficult. Yeah. And that's the other thing, you know, having short term therapy, life throws us a curveball. 
So what you went for originally for the therapy isn't necessarily what you would go for again, because, you know, marriage, divorce, death, it's always out there. And sometimes people just need that safe space to talk to somebody. Oh, I think 100 percent that is yeah. that's really so true that people will have different phases in their lives. They have different curveball, you know, as you say, curveballs in your life. And um, also, as they've got older, the discomfort gets higher yeah. because the defences get more weaker in terms of vulnerability. And they get to a place in their life where they, it becomes more of a survival level. And also people say to me, um, you know, I'm now 40, 50, I've got more money, different phase in my life, and I would like to take it further. Yeah. So I think short-term therapy can be a very useful and can be a bridge to, you know, if it goes right. Yes. Yeah. Now, of course, if it goes wrong, we've got another story. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that to me is where the relational part of, of long-term therapy comes into it because you would, you know, talk about that in the therapy room. Whereas, you know, with, with, I don't know, with short-term therapy, I've got it in my head that there's no space for the relationship because it's, it's fast paced. You know, you've, you've got a plan, I would imagine in every, every session that you're doing, this is what we need to cover. Yeah. This is where we're going. I think you're right in, in terms of the relationship's not the focus. Yeah. But when I think of the people who say to me, you know, what I remembered about those four sessions or those 10 sessions is the kindness yeah. that be showed. It, you know, it, it can also remember the relational aspect, even though it was short term. And it might not have been focused on, but it stayed in the mind of the person. Yeah, which is the important thing. The client is the focus of it. Yeah. And as long as they're getting what they need from it, then who are we to judge what they need? <laughs> no, uh, uh, and... Another aspect of this I'd just like to bring in um, is that, and I've heard this so many times from people, I do an assessment with somebody who talks about tremendous trauma in their history, or they present in a fairly chaotic way, and obviously you can see there's some, some earlier disturbance. And I say to them, and it's usually to the question from how long do you think I've been therapy, and I say, well, with your level of trauma and what happened to you and how you're presenting, oh, this isn't going to be short term, it's more likely to be a year. Yeah. Quite often, you know, Jackie, the person says, well, I actually know that. Yeah. They know that the level of trauma, the level of confusion, the difficulties which they're talking about, they know that that won't be resolved in 10 sessions. Yeah. So the often the people themselves know what they want. Yeah. And th there are those people, you know, I, I'm an ex-foster carer and I know for a fact that one of the, the children that we had was very reluctant to go back and look at the things. Oh, well, yes, yeah. You know, so some people don't want to, they know that the past is impacting and affecting their present, but it's not somewhere where they want to go back to relive or to explore or experience or anything it's in a box and it's shut and I'm not saying at some point that won't change but mm. there are people that are fearful of looking at the trauma I think there's a lot of people and then there's some people who really know for survival reasons that they have to do that yeah yeah and you can't really do that in six sessions no no Ten sessions and the person knows themselves yeah. So, you know, the, the importance of going back and dealing with the trauma and uh, debriefing that, you know, and unpacking that. And some people obviously don't want to do that, but there's many people know they have to do that. Uh, it takes time and necessarily so. It's a slow process. Other person, otherwise, the person may get overwhelmed and never come back again. Yeah. So that's that style of therapy. You know, I think there's a lot in that for helping people who've been particularly disturbed in life 
or even haven't in the sense of helping the person reflect and develop emotional literacy so they're able to you know look at different things in their lives and get to understand themselves and uh all that we're talking about here now if you again if you're going to try to be a professional therapist you need to do that and then and i don't get the this many through my institute i must say because i suppose because it's a psychotherapy institute and maybe they think of therapy as more in depth and counseling but um you you know so i don't ever get many of these type of people who only want 10 sessions because they've come to me but or stroke and if i thought it only was going to take six to ten sessions i would say that yeah and i'd put them to a therapist with that actual contract if you like that the person's coming for 12 sessions they only want to specifically look at this they, they want these behavioral changes and they don't want to have a long-term therapy or, are you able to take this person on board? Yeah. So that then would determine the contract. Yes, yeah. So the contract needs to be transparent and really clear. Yeah. And the con the contract is is vital. Because mm. I have had clients in the past that literally just want to come once a week to offload. Yes, yeah. They, they, they're not looking to work on anything. It's just a safe space where they can talk about work, family relationships, whatever's happened in the seven days and literally offload, go away and are quite happy till the next week when they come back and they want to offload again. That's true. And one caveat in this is to not discount yourself. See, I think people, your answer is correct, but it needs to be to the specific person. Yes, yes. And that's where relational psychotherapy comes in. Yeah can't just be with anyone no and i'm not saying that we didn't do some work in that mm. but their initial contract was just to yeah. contracts the important thing yeah to come in and to talk with somebody that knows nothing about their life doesn't mm. judge doesn't have an opinion yeah. and they can, type of safe person yeah just talk about anything for 50 minutes yeah yeah so while i said that i'm not saying you do this jack at all but i know that many therapists do do what i'm going to say they discount their importance to that person in the relationship. Yeah. Clients don't necessarily talk to anyone. No, no. They talk to people they trust. They talk yeah. to people they feel safe with. They yeah. talk to people who can come from a place which is non-judgmental. And it needs to be a good fit, whether it's short term or long term. It needs That's to it. be a, a good fit between the client and the therapist. Yeah. I like what you said about a review to see how the person's getting on as they get along. And yes, they may come for short-term psychotherapy, which is much more specific, much more solution-focused, much more behavioural. And that, that's fine as well, but as long as the person knows what they've signed up for. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I like, you know, the, the way that, I do it because it was how I was trained is that you know you can recontract because often what the client comes for originally isn't necessarily what comes up in the sessions and okay. I find it you know really important that we recontract every so often to see whether this is still you know what what they want to be doing no I certainly agree with the sort of longer term contracts like you've just said and being reviewed and and sessional agreements as well. Yeah. It has that level of transparency and also people know what they're signing up to. Yeah. And I think one of the accusations often thrown at long-term psychotherapists is as Aka we're talking about here, that the therapy just goes on and on and on and on. And there's no contract, if you like. Yeah. That's the criticism that I've heard from certain people that I've come across in my career oh. that do hypnotism and, you know, NLP and things like that is that, you know, we don't actually, I want to use the word cure people because that was what they do, you know, and it's just ongoing emptying of a bank account and not actually achieving anything. And it's like, well, you've never had therapy then. <laughs> Yeah. you've not experienced the the changes that take place in a therapy room 
That's really correct. And those types of people often feel threatened, by the way. Yeah. Um, and those types of people, you know, have also have may have a good point in the terms of um, that the therapist hasn't may have not been transparent and hasn't um, had contracts and isn't working towards positive change and all things we're talking about. Um, but it is a it is a criticism of a thrown at long term psychotherapists. Uh, so I do think it's important for long-term therapists to have reviews and contracts and work within the relationship uh, towards positive growth, which is um, talked out between the two of you yeah, and, the, and not just going on yeah. with any type of um, spelt out goal between the two of you. Yeah. And I like the word that you've used throughout this, which is transparent. You know, it needs to be transparent. The, the client can talk openly about how it's going and whether they want to continue. And, you know, talking about short term or long term, the ending of therapy, I think, is really important as well. That it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Very much so. That's contracted and, you know, transparent as well. Yeah. Mm. I would not be a very good short term therapist. I don't think I was <laughs> because I was trained in, in in long term. I don't know. I've never gone down that road, um, so it's probably a bit discounted myself to say that. However, I'm very happy I chose the road road of a long term relational psychotherapist. I think it demands that you've done a lot of psychotherapy yourself. Yeah, it demands a lot of lot of aspects and differences than say short-term psychotherapy however i'm glad i've gone down that road and then i've talked to many people by the way there's cpt therapists if you want to call them therapists i i think it's i think it's an odd word because we'd have to talk about what therapy is but anyway or we'll say you know cpt therapists or people that offer short-term insurances or whatever it is who really are pleased that they have been short-term psychotherapists because they don't want to you know, go down the road of looking at regression and counter-transference and transference, and they're happy to focus on behavioural solution-focused where they can see behavioural change quicker. Yeah. So I didn't go that way, but there are many people who did, and I think there are advantages. I said throughout the early part of this podcast, and... You know, people choose that route, and for me, that's fine. And if they then go on to look at other things, that's fine as well. Yeah, hundred percent. And you know, you said you'd experienced it, and I certainly experienced it. That you know, some clients do come in with a view to long term, and after four or six weeks, they've got everything they want from it, and are quite happy to end at that point. So you know, I always say you're not signing you, your life away. It's really you know what I mean? it's not signing in blood and you've got to stay for yeah. two years or anything. And that's very refreshing to hear because it's very important that the therapist uh, respects the autonomy of the person in front of them mm. and says, that's fine. I'm glad you've got yeah. what you've got. And yeah. if you ever want to come back, that's fine also. Yeah. And some of my clients have, they've ended and then two years down the line, they've got back in touch again and something else has happened and can I come back again, which is absolutely fine. Yeah. So that type of transparency, respect, a sense of integrity for the autonomy of the client is so important in our work, whether it's short term or long term. Yeah. And, you know, it, I think it needs to be said, I, I, I've not experienced counselling, so I can't say, but you know, there's an awful lot of therapy takes place outside of the therapy room. Oh. It's not I just the 50 don't. minutes that, you know, yeah. we spend together. There's a there's a kind of osmosis that happens the rest of the time. Without a doubt. Yeah. Brilliant. So we'll end it there. The, so what... Yeah. I think it's a good place to end it. And it's a... It, it's a I could go on talking about this for another half hour, but... It's, it's a good place to end with the respect, I think, and autonomy of the client in front of you as a barometer for change. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. But I wouldn't change the psychotherapy that I've been trained in. <laughs> no, that's a path I took, and other people take other paths, and they do 
They, Fantastic they, jobs, they, yeah. Fantastic job as anyone else. Yeah. Um, um, I know short time focus is a fantastic job. So it, 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 it's, it, you know, it's horses for courses. And as long as we respect the autonomy of the person in front of us, then that's really the bond for our professional careers, I think. Yeah, definitely. Okay, until next time, Bob, we're going to be looking at habits a therapist needs to cultivate to enhance the therapy. Yeah, and you know something... I was talking to somebody who's been a therapist for 30 years about 20 minutes ago, and she said, what habits? Yeah, what habits? <laughs> I, I, I said, you know, those things that you do every day with your clients, which enhance the relationship and build up the race. Oh, and then she listed off about 20. So okay. yes, I'm looking forward to discussing that. Okay, until next time, Bob. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Therapy Show. Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.